Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ultimate Lead Generation Machine. My name is Phil Hollander, your host for today's session. I want to especially thank RE Technologies uh, for hosting this webinar today. They're an excellent organization, and it's a pleasure to be uh, uh, delivering this webinar for you today. And the topic I'm talking about today is very, very important to your business. You know, just by way of background, um, I Morris Marketing, which is a proud member of the Elm Street family of companies, has been in existence now for 94 years. And for the record, in case you were wondering, I have not been around for 94 years. I did not start in 1929. But for 34 of those years, Morris Marketing has been working with some of the top agents throughout North America, both the contents of the United States and Canada. We have clients in all jurisdictions, in many case, cases for decades. And what I'm going to share with you is incredibly important for, for your business. I've also, just by way of background as well, uh, I've co-authored several books, even a best-selling book that was published in 2017 on the topic I'm about to speak on. And that is, you know, for traveling prior to COVID predominantly for 20 years, Wherever I go and in my daily conversations, the topic of leads, leads, leads comes up over and over and over again, almost daily in every conversation. And what you'll probably hear me say multiple times throughout this webinar is what's equally as important as leads is your ability to take those leads and actually convert them into clients. Lead conversion is equally, if not more important uh, than lead generation. Both are important, but if you're not converting, you're not having a sustainable, prosperous real estate practice. And so what I'm going to share with you is uh, the latest facts on lead generation conversion. Morris Marketing, which is on the cutting edge and within Elm Street, and is on the cutting edge of research and education. We partnered a couple of years ago with a, another organization called T360. And what we did was we can, did a study whereby we looked at where do the best leads come from? The absolute best leads you can possibly generate, number one. And number two is who is uh, converting them? And three, the most important part of that is what is their strategy? What are they doing specifically in terms of lead conversion? And out of that, this webinar was born. So what I want to share with you is not my opinion, although I've got decades of experience working with agents and again, written a couple of books on this very topic, but I want to share with you the latest facts on lead generation and conversion. Number two is, it turns out based on the research, there are different approaches that realtors take with respect to the lead generation and conversion process. And I'm going to share with you that. And many agents find themselves whether they're aware of it or not, out of alignment with um, who they are as a person and their lead generation strategy. And it turns out there are four dominant lead, uh, real estate agent personality types insofar as the lead gen and conversion process are concerned. And what will be incredibly interesting is as I go through the four different realtor personality types, you'll be able to determine who you are based on your personality, and then realign your, your strategy so it's more in accordance with your dominant personality type. And that's incredibly liberating. As a matter of fact, that's one of the keys to helping you make more money, and I'm going to get to that in a moment. And then based on that, once I share with you the strategy of agents that consistently do well in generating the best possible leads and, of course, converting them, uh, you'll be able to decide what type of business you want to have literally from this day forward. And, you know, after working with agents now for decades, 34 years, top realtors in North America, there's a structure to success. There's a science to success. There's a formula to success. If you want to know how what people if you want to model what people do well, you might as well look at those people who are already successful. So what I'm going to share with you is the proven success formula for how agents consistently, and the, the key word here is consistently, generate the best possible leads and then subsequently convert them into clients. And if we have time, uh, we'll, we'll have a Q&A at the end. And I, I promise I'll do my very utmost best to bring this in under an hour. With that in mind, let's begin with the formal part of the webinar. So it's a pleasure to be here. And again, my name is Phil Hollander. Um, I want to uh, ask you a very simple but albeit a powerful question. 
And that is what type of real estate agent do you want to be? You see, here's the thing. I've often commented, and again, I've been doing this for a long time, that I've rarely, if ever, met the five-year-old that said, you know, they wanted to be a realtor when they grew up. People come into real estate from every conceivable background. I've got the most fascinating job because I get to speak to some most interesting people. You know, realtors come from, you know, I've got professional athletes, NFL football players as clients, former Olympic athletes. I've got school teachers, funeral directors turned realtors, uh, flower arrangers, you name it, mayors of cities. It's really fascinating to me. But prior to making the decision and we all did this either consciously or unconsciously, that you wanted to become a realtor. And, and by the way, the average age of realtors, in case you didn't know, is in their 50s, because people often come to real estate as a second or third profession. But prior to making the decision that you wanted to become a realtor, and every subsequent year, you're asking yourself, what type of real estate agent do you want to be? What type of business do you want to have for yourself? You have what I would refer to as a vision for your business, whether you're aware of it or not. And as part of that vision are what type of clients you want to work with, uh, how you want to spend your day. A lot of people come to real estate from the corporate world, a more structured nine to five world. And now that you're an entrepreneur, you have your own business, you're able to define your, your day as you see fit. And so you have a vision for that. You definitely have a vision for how much money you want to make your income. You very well know you can do very, very well financially as a professional realtor, almost better than any other profession, predicated that you have the right strategy, which I'm going to share with you in a few moments. All of this culminates in your lifestyle and, of course, the degree of confidence you have in the future. And one other quick note about your vision. Not everyone wants to be the number one agent in the universe. I mean, some people I speak to want to, you know, make a really, really good living, like a supplemental income for their families. And other people, other agents want to, you know, be the number one realtor in their respective area or own their own brokerage or have big teams. I, I deal with the whole continuum in my world. I, I deal with brand new agents. I also uh, have a client who has the, you know, uh, 80 agents on his team. He started with me when he was new and he grew to that level. But whatever your vision is, and that's a very subjective thing, one thing is very, very certain. One of the things is 100% certain, and that is, in order to create or manifest your vision, you have to create a steady flow of leads. Leads are, if you will, the economic fuel that allow you to create whatever vision you've defined for yourself. There's no two ways about that. Um, and, you know, on leads, and again, realtors will say to me all day long, every single day, they want leads, leads, leads. And I say to them, and you'll hear me say this probably several times, it doesn't matter the number of leads, because if you're not converting them, it doesn't matter if you have 10,000 leads, if you're not converting them, they're of no value. So there's different ways to look at leads. One of them, and I know this is familiar, but it's nice to see this visually represented. There's the lead spectrum. By and large, leads come to you from two predominant sources. You have leads to the left-hand side of your screen that come to you from uh, cold lead sources, which are otherwise known as things like Facebook ads we're very much familiar with, Google pay-per-click, which is Google PPC, PPC or PPC. You have agent lead generating websites. You know, in the last decade, with algorithms, don't ask me how we do this, but there's with algorithms, your companies are able to glean leads from the internet, prepackage them and sell them to agents, which is pretty amazing. You couldn't do that uh, several years ago. But leads that come to you from Facebook ads, Google pay-per-click or PPC and agent websites and other similar sources are regarded as cold lead sources. And then to the right-hand side of your screen, you have leads that come to you what are regarded as warm lead sources. So we're all familiar with leads that come to you from client referral and repeat business. But what you may not be aware of is that everyone that you know, be it a past client or part of what's called your generalized fear of influence, they know every single year in their network of contacts, people you may not know, anywhere between three and five people that they can refer you each and every year as part of their, and every single year. In addition, most people will buy and sell, there are exceptions to everything, but most people will buy and sell once 
in a 10 year period of time. Look, there are people who never move. We all know people in that category, but there's also people who get divorced three times. You know, people in that category, but generally speaking, the national average is about once every 10 years. So it, you, it leads that come to you from referrals from your clients and sphere of influence network and repeat business because people buy at least once in a 10 year period of time. Um, are wonderfully warm leads. You have a proven track record, they're warm leads. And then beyond that, as a real estate professional, you're also networked with other people in related professions, anywhere from the trades to people uh, more in the, in the mortgage business or finance business uh, to um, you know, attorneys and other sources that in the course of doing daily business, you naturally refer them business and they naturally would refer you because of your ongoing relationship. And beyond that, we're also members of the larger networks of organizations, non-real estate related, where in the course of your interactions, you would be inclined to refer people business and they refer you business. So you have two dominant lead sources. You have pulled leads to the left-hand side in the screen of the spectrum. And you have warm leads to the right-hand side. But, you know, as I said a moment ago, realtors will say to me all the time, they want leads, leads, leads. But not all leads are the same. You know, there are, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a thousand leads. If you're not converting them, you don't have a viable, sustainable, successful and prosperous real estate practice. So there's a really two different ways to really evaluate a lead if you really boil this down and that one way is uh, one criteria if you will is lead quality lead quality as it sounds is what is the probability that a lead you generate from any source a cold lead source or a warm lead source what is the probability you'll be able to convert that lead into a client obviously the higher quality higher probable lead the better it is for your business so that's one criteria or determinant of a lead uh, uh, value to you. And the other one is lead competition. And like that sounds and looks like is what is, how many other agents in addition to yourself are vying for the same business? Obviously in scenarios where there's less other agents you're up against, the better it is for you in terms of converting that lead. Many of you have had this scenario. I know most of you have had this in some form or another, at least if you haven't, you certainly will in the course of your career. You go and do a listing presentation. And in doing that listing presentation, you find out from the, the people uh, listing their property, the prospective client, that not only did, they're interviewing, uh, they've interviewed a couple people in addition to yourself, they're probably going to be interviewing a couple more. That can be very demoralizing because you're up against a lot of competition. Obviously, if your strategy is, is generating leads where you're not up against so many other realtors, the better it is for you. So I think we can uh, all agree that from a strategic point of view, the ultimate situation is to consistently, and I would underline the word consistently, generate high quality leads that have a high probability of conversion and low qu high quality, low competition leads. Leads that have a high qual, uh, probability of conversion that there's not a lot of other agents in addition to yourself competing for the business. And if you're doing that, and I'm going to share with you how to do this in a few moments, what that means in raw practical term, terms for you is you're spending less time chasing leads that go nowhere. You are valuable. Your time is valuable. And no one wants to be on a lead chasing treadmill, if you will. There's nothing more frustrating than chasing lead after lead that goes nowhere, that dies on the vine. So that means less time chasing leads that go nowhere, more time doing the work that you envision prior to getting your license in every year, uh, the work that you enjoy. And if you're doing that, there's no question you're not only uh, making more money, but you're, ma you're making more money and enjoying yourself along the way. That's the ideal situation. Again, to consistently generate high quality, low competition leads. And if you're wondering at this point in the webinar, how do you create consistently create high quality, low competition leads? How do you make that happen? Well, I'm going to share with you how to do that. I literally wrote two books on this subject and I've got decades worth of experience. If wealth is packaged experience, I've got a ton of it, raw practical experience of helping agents do exactly this. And this gives me uh, the authority to speak on this subject. And it's amazingly simple when I share with you the strategy. You know, 
there's a great saying, it's my favorite saying in all the world, and that is all the great truths in life are simple because if they're complex, I think everyone would understand them. So when I reveal to you in a few moments how to do this, it's amazingly simple. People overcomplicate everything. With that in mind, let's share, let's set the context for this. And this is incredibly interesting. Some of the research about lead generation and conversion. And that has to do with the study that I refer to at the outset of my webinar that was conducted with Morris Marketing, a uh, proud member of the Elm Street Family Companies, uh, and T360. And in that study, we looked at, we survey right across North America, and it turns out when it comes to lead generation and conversion, there's four dominant personality types. And by the way, as I review this, it'll be incredibly helpful for you and your business and moving forward to see which one best matches you. Only you know yourself better than anyone else. So which personality type best matches you? So let's start from the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, there are realtors that all things being equal would rather live in the cold lead gen world. And they're known as the, given all the choice, they'd rather deal with predominantly, if not exclusively, cold leads specifically. And they're known as the prospectors and converters. And then moving to the right-hand side of the screen, there are realtors that all things being equal would rather live in the warm lead gen world. They're, they're known as the networkers and marketers. Let's drill down on this and see what the distinctions are between these four categories and then see where you fit into the equation. Well, this is amazing. I think this is absolutely amazing. In the study, one of the most surprising results that the vast majority of agents, whether they're aware of it or not, are actually uh, warm legion agents. More than eight out of 10 fall into the networker and marketer category. Uh, that's staggering. That's incredible statistic. And a lot of agents aren't aware that they're networkers and marketers by personality type, but they are more than eight out of 10. Far fewer are the pure and authentic cold lead gen agents known as the prospectors and converters, um, literally 14%. And of these two, let's start from the left-hand side of the screen. Of the two cold lead gen agent personality types, prospector and converters, due in large part to technology, the vast majority of cold lead gen agents are actually uh, converters over prospectors. But let's look at the difference between the two. I actually just spoke to a prospector this morning. A prospector in its pure form um, is, a matter of fact, uh, in the old days, let me kind of uh, step back here for a moment. In the old days, a pure prospector would consult a directory. The really, really old days, and I'm old enough to remember this, maybe a phone book or something like that. And what a prospector would do is make call after call after call to complete strangers, people they did not know. And they're trying to find that proverbial needle in the haystack, that one individual that would agree to meet with them. They had a chance of perhaps, you know, uh, listing their property or selling them into a, no a new one. And if you look at the personality traits of a pure prospector, the first thing to say is they're incredibly tenacious. They have to be. They're calling people that literally do not want to be contacted. They're not expected to be contacted, don't want to be contacted. They're calling people complete strangers. They have to handle rejection really, really well because you're getting a lot of it. You're calling people that are not necessarily in the buying and selling mode or transaction mode and don't necessarily want to be contacted. They have incredibly disciplined in terms of their prospecting habits. They have exquisite phone skills and appointment setting skills. And they have to, by nature, be incredibly organized and very diligent in their follow-up. Because if they found someone, that needle in the haystack that agreed to meet with them, they better be sure they followed up if they stood a chance of actually converting them into a client. Well, it turns out, and again, as I said a moment ago, due in large part to technology, there are far fewer prospectors today, and there are a vast majority of cold lead gen agents are converters. What that means is, is now you can actually subscribe to services, which is pretty great, that can package and sell you leads, uh, subscription services. So the one key distinction between a prospector and converter is, a prospector is very proactive. They're creating their leads from scratch, where there's a converter is actually purchasing leads and therefore they're very reactive. But a converter has all the same personality type 
as a prospector. They're incredibly tenacious. They handle rejection well. They're really good in terms of their follow-up and responsiveness. They have exquisite phone skills and appointment setting skills. They're incredibly organized and diligent in their follow-up. And another distinction between the prospector and converter on the cold lead gen side is converters are acutely aware of what's called their cost per lead acquisition, meaning specifically, if a prospector does not convert within a specified period of time, and the statute of limitations is not that long, often leads don't carry over from one month to another, because oftentimes they're low quality, high competition leads, then that lead, that lead is gone forever, that money is gone forever. So converters are very aware of what they're paying for their leads. But here's the point, of the, uh, the totality of the realtor po population, Far fewer of the realtor population are actually pure and authentic cold lead gen agents of the two categories, the prospector and converters due in large part to technology. Most converter agents or cold gen agents today are converters there as opposed to prospectors. Moving over to the right hand side of the spring, screen, the vast majority of agents embody what I call the quintessential realtor personality. This is a realtor that I'm a person that I'm very familiar with because I've been working with them for decades. Uh, they're the networkers and marketers. And of this, of the warm selling agents, the vast majority in this case are actually networkers over marketers. Networkers embody the quintessential realtor personality. That is, if you look at some of the top realtors out there, they have all these great skills. They have relationship skills. They have negotiation skills, communication skills. They have all of these skills because if you look at what you're doing as a realtor for a living, you're dealing with family issues, legal issues, financial issues and change, and you're the facilitator. So having these people skills, relationship skills, communication skills comes in very, very uh, helpful, very handy because you're facilitating the real estate buying and selling process. So if you look at the personality traits of a networker, networkers do an exquisite job of creating relationships and then uh, nurturing those relationships and subsequently leveraging the relations over the time in the short term for referrals because everyone knows three to five people every year they can refer an agent. And then subsequently down the road for repeat business, because people buy and sell every four to 10 years. So networkers do a great job of creating relationships, maintaining them, and leveraging relationships. And often because of the great skills that a networking agent has, they very often uh, play a leadership role in their respective community and organizations uh, within their community that they're a part of. A derivative of the warm selling agent is called the marketer. Marketers have all the same great skills as a networker, the people skills, relationship skills, negotiation skills, communication skills, and so forth. The key distinction is a marketer has developed what's called a brand identity. They have identified a niche part of the market and they have subsequent marketing campaigns to reinforce that. So for example, they might specialize in working with young families. Maybe it's investment. Uh, dealing with people, investors, or maybe it's seniors or condos and something like that. Um, but by and large, marketers are warm selling agents. It's just that they're more nuanced in terms of the types of clients that they deal with. Here's the point. Of all the realtors, most of them are realtors, whether they're or not, are warm selling agents. And most of the 86% or 8 of 10 are actually networkers over marketers. Now, let's look at the, the two different types, main types, cold lead gen agent versus warm gen agents to two examples of different agents. Here's Carl, the prospector and converter. What's interesting about Carl is he's really, by his personality type, a networker, but his strategy is out of alignment with his personality. So here's Carl's world. Carl's vision for his business was to work with families help them you know, navigate the real estate buying and selling process, dealing with their largest investment. That really is what excites him, what, why he went into real estate in the first place. But his strategy is more of a converter. So he purchases leads every month, which is great, but here's Carl's world. Every month he gets a certain amount of leads. And what happens in his world is because a lot of the leads he gets are low quality, high competition leads, he has to, whatever he's doing, he could be with his family, 
having dinner. He can be playing with his children. He could be uh, with a client weekends, nights. He's going to literally drop everything he's doing and respond to that lead if he has a chance of converting. And very often he doesn't convert. And the leads that he doesn't convert typically do not carry over from one month to the next. They're just, you know, they're, they're, they're basically... Uh, he has what's called a transactional based business where he has a really good month sometimes and then he has a not so good month and then he has a good year and a bad year. He's riding what's called the proverbial feast of famine cycle. Some people call it the roller coaster of real estate or the feast of famine cycle where he has a good month, a bad month, a good year, a bad year. And quite frankly, it stresses him out. He'd rather have more consistent business. So Carl is known as what's called a transactional commodity-based agent. Great guy, great agent, but the problem is he doesn't have consistent business and his strategy is out of alignment with who he is or his vision for his business. And that is very disconcerting for him. In contrast, you have Rosa. Rosa is the networker and marketer. Her strategy is actually more of a networker and her vision, similar to Carl, was to work with families, help them navigate the real estate buying and selling process, the mean, with their largest investment. And in her world, she doesn't deal with lead, low quality, high competition leads. She deals with the exact opposite. So she does a great job of creating relationships, nurturing those relationships over time. And she's well aware that everyone she knows can refer up to three to five people every year. Plus, she also knows that people buy and sell every four to 10 years. And so every year in Rosa's world, Another batch of her past clients and part of her sphere of influence will buy and sell again. In addition, she gets more and more referrals. So unlike Carl, who has a commodity-based transactional business, Rosa, in contrast, has what I call a relational annuity-based business, where her business gets better and better and better every year as she builds her business. So her cost per client acquisition actually goes down and her work enjoyment goes up. And here's the stat that tells the whole story. Of all the leads that are generated, this is a NAR stat, uh, approximately 67% of the best leads, the highest quality, lowest competition leads come to you from referral and repeat. And you know this from your direct experience. And the reason for that has to do with human nature. And that is if someone has paid you money to represent them, they have the highest prob possible probability in the short term of referring you and then subsequently down the road to repeat set with you. Why? Because you have a proven track record. But here's the caveat. It is not automatic. You need a strategy, which I'm going to share with you in a moment, to tap into that reservoir of the highest quality, lowest competition leads. So Rose is doing exactly that. And as a consequence, her business gets better and better every year. She's creating that annuity-based relational business. And that's why uh, she's really enjoying her business and her life and making more money and enjoying the, uh, the process along the way. So when you think about your business, you think about your personality, which side of the real estate marketing sandbox do you want to play in? There's no right answer. You could be a hybrid, but the vast, you can be part prospector, part networker, or any combination there of the categories. But the vast majority of realtors, whether they're aware of it or not, are actually networkers and marketers. Uh, the only issue is their strategy is not in alignment with their personality type. So if your answer to this question is to get more of the good stuff, to be more of a, like a Rosa a network and marketer, then that's exactly what I'm going to share with you of how to do that. That's my area of expertise. Literally written a couple of books on this very subject, as I mentioned earlier. So just to reinforce the 67%, most business comes from referral and repeat business. Most people know a realtor within their network. But if someone doesn't know a realtor, it is also human nature to, to consult someone that they know, like, and trust. You see, there are two criteria for someone to work with you as a realtor. People in real estate work with whom they know, like, and trust because you're dealing with family issues, legal issues, financial issues, and change, and you're the facilitator, but based on your expertise. And if someone does not have a realtor they know, like, and trust, then it's human nature, given what's at stake in buying and selling real estate, uh, their largest investment, they will go to someone they know, like, and trust and get a referral. You're doing this 
with other industries, financial services, for example, it's just human nature. It's the way business is done. So that's why the number is so high where the best leads come from the source. And if you look at the strategy of agents that tap into that 67%, that consistently generate referral and repeat business, high quality, low competition business, let me share with you exactly what they're doing. And it's incredibly simple. You know, all the major trainers talk about this, uh, whether it's Brian Buffini or Joe Stump or Tom Ferry or Mike, oh, all of these guys talk about this. It's really how you implement it. And that is having a systems-based business. You probably heard this before. Systems, marketing systems in particular, are incredibly important to your real estate business. Let me explain why. Every, and it's actually an incredibly simple answer, every business, and real estate is no exception, you need systems. Why? Because in any business, there are daily, weekly, monthly, yearly sales, marketing, and admin activities that must be done. Every business has them. Real estate is no exception. Talk about marketing uh, systems here. Without a system, inevitably what happens is things that you need to do that are absolutely critical to your success do not happen. You're flying by the seat of your pants. They just, they just fall through the cracks. You're literally... They don't get done. You become, in the absence of a system, what's called a transactional realtor. And most agents are great agents. It's just that they're transactional. However, you probably already know that marketing systems is incredibly important. But there are two scenarios when it comes to implementing systems. This is how I describe it. So, a lot of agents, they go through the training. They get that they need a marketing system. But what happens is... Some agents think, especially newer agents, that they're saving time, energy, and money by doing all their marketing themselves. So here's what happens. They try and do their website themselves. They try and do their social media themselves. They try and do their email marketing themselves, their CRM themselves, their direct mail themselves, all while trying to do everything else in their business, like CMAs, like listing presentations, negotiating deals, working with clients, and showing properties. The bottom line is, it is physically impossible, whether you're new, let alone you've been in business for any length of time, to do all your marketing yourself, as well as all the day-to-day -day stuff in your business, even with the best of intentions, even if you had an assistant, even if you're new and have more time than clients. So that's not a viable nor sustainable strategy to do all your marketing systems yourself. The more uh, common scenario when it comes to systems implementation, marketing systems, is what I refer to as the fractionated realtor. What's a fractionated realtor? A fractionated realtor is a realtor that understands, yes, they need marketing systems. They get it. They know they can't do it themselves. So what do they do? They know they have to leverage their time by using outside suppliers to do their marketing strategy. But what happens is, and this happens over time, is they buy all their marketing resources a la carte. So they uh, end up getting a website from one company and a CRM from another company and a social media content from yet another company. And then they get um, uh, their direct mail from another company, email from another company, and the list goes on. When I get the fractionated realtor to add up their requisite marketing costs, not only does it cost them a, a literal fortune to do their marketing, but I got to tell you, it's not your day job to juggle four or five marketing companies and do everything else you have to do as a successful realtor, like CMAs and listing presentations, negotiating deals and working with clients. So being fractionated is, doesn't help either. And it's incredibly expensive. If you model the agents that have figured out systems well, they don't do it themselves. They're not dealing with five companies. They have what's called an integrated and automated marketing system and they apply the success formula. They have a success system. Now, there are three components of your success system. Uh, the three pillars, what I like to talk about. On the front end of your success system is all about taking leads from whatever source you get them, cold leads, warm leads, and converting them into clients. If you're not converting leads on the front end, you're not making money. And if you follow this through, if you're converting more leads, you're going to be more busy transactionally. So the second pillar is transactional management. You need to be more organized. Imagine having you know, a nice problem to have. You go from five listings to 10. That could drive you nuts if you're not organized. Nice problem to have, but I've seen realtors become a victim of their own success. And the third pillar is 
post-sale follow-up, leveraging relationships for the good stuff in the short term for referrals, and then subsequently down the road for repeat business. All three are important. And what brings a system to life is not so much a CRM, but having one CRM that facilitates the three pillars is great, but being organized in a CRM is tantamount to being getting all dressed and having nowhere to go. What brings a, C, a strategy to life is the communication tools. So in the success system, the realtors that do well month after month, year after year, and they develop like Rosa, that annuity-based business, tapping into that 67%, they integrate, they automate, and here's what they're doing. They have a month, and I'll go through these in detail in a moment. They have a monthly direct mail newsletter to their A-list clients and hot prospects. There's a rise in direct mail, which I'm going to share with you why in a moment. Really important, especially what's happening in the real estate marketing world. They have a monthly e-newsletter to their B-list contacts. They have a monthly market update to all their contacts. Again, I'm going to review this. There's the informational, and then there's a relational. They have a monthly relationship building call once a quarter. They have an annual real estate checkup, obviously once a year, aka or otherwise known as uh, mini CMA. On the relational side, they have birthday and move-in anniversaries with their databases, the database once a year. And ideally, they facilitate one in-person contact once a year with their database. Let's look at the the uh, parts of the success system, the individual components, and why are they important? The first thing is they have all these components in one place. Direct mail is really, really important. Whenever I uh, talk about direct mail, a lot of agents say to me, really, direct mail, Phil, it's 2023, we're talking direct mail, and I'm saying to you, yes, direct mail. Let me explain why. Well, you know, in the last five to 10 years, most industries, and real estate was no exception, went digital with everything, and understandably so. But in the real estate specifically is coming back big time to direct mail. Why? And the reason why they're doing that in part has to do with things like the open rates on email. Do you know, if you send, and I'm saying don't do email, but I'll give you an example. If you send out 100 emails today, uh, and 18 of the 100, this is a MailChimp statistic, 18 opens your email, that's considered an astronomical open rate, which means that 82% of people don't even open up email, let alone read it. And it's not personal. It's got to do with smartphones, mobile phones. And the reason is you and I are getting emails all day long from people, from products, from services. We know who they are. We end up deleting most of them. And it's not personal because no one has time or want to read a graphically designed email on a smart screen, especially when they're getting so many of them. And I'm not saying don't say email, but what I am saying is as a realtor, in contrast to email, you're in the business of buying and selling homes, properties, condos. There's a very, very powerful concept which I wanna share with you. It's called associative marketing, which is very simple. You want me to think about you, not on my phone where I'm likely to delete your message. Again, not personal, it's getting so many emails, but in the very context or place where I use your services, my home, my condo, my property. This is really important, but not just any direct mail. People don't want ego-based fluff. The direct mail that works, and this is what I do for my clients, is called client-centered, recipient-centered direct mail. You know, on a 100-person mailing list, qualified list, and I'll show you what to do in a moment, I'm using direct mail. I'm getting over 15 transactions a year on a 100-person mailing list. And the reason for the success rate in terms of business is because of the type of direct mail. So the direct mail that works, first, are going to be criteria. It must be in an envelope. Otherwise, it's a pizza flyer. Number two, it has to have a recognizable return address. Number three, it has to have substance related to your expertise. So the, the direct mail that works has to have substance, like ways people can optimize the value of the property, emerging home technologies, home safety and security. It's, it's re, it has to reinforce why people have chosen to work with you or refer you or even work with you in the first place. You cannot expect to be successful if you're se sending self-serving ego-based fluff. So the, the direct mail that works has to have substance that reinforces the why, your expertise. And some of the innovative things some of my clients do very quickly with direct mail is they turn the lens of their marketing to create value for the recipients. So some of my clients 
for example, will promote their clients' businesses and or services. That invokes things like the law of reciprocity. I have clients that have referral appreciation programs. There's a lot of nuances to doing this well. I have a client that, uh, you, know, prom, uh, you know, when he sells a house to a young family, he'll get one of the children to draw a picture of the house that they're moving into and publishes their artwork on the front. There's so many things you can do that reinforce that the value in your relationship with people and direct mail works. It works because people don't get a lot of direct mail from people they know, but it has to have value and be in an envelope. And one other thing, you're worth too much money to be stuffing envelopes. So part of the realtors who do this, it's part of their success system. It needs to be integrated and automated. It shouldn't be you doing the work. It should be part of your integrated success system. Uh, you need to have an e-newsletter as well, specifically for your prospects. You know as well as I do that a lot of leads, especially the low quality, high competition ones, don't give you, uh, they just simply don't give you their direct mail address. People are very cautious, but you need to follow up in a substantive way. So having an integrated automated e-newsletter is huge. And so having that as part of your success system is huge. And the email needs to be automated. It also has to reinforce your expertise uh, and be well-researched, well, like the direct mail, well-researched, well, real estate, um, in for good real estate substantive information. And it shouldn't be you doing the work integration and automation in the name of the game. In the spirit of creating value, realtors who is part of their success system that tap into that 67%, provide their, share their expertise with their clients with a regular market up, update. You can also, this is very important for your hot prospects and converting them as well. But let me share with you a thought on this. People don't want just the general real estate statistics for the real estate boards or associations, they get that everywhere. They're really ubiquitous. I mean, people get that online and offline. What people want from you in terms of stats is your interpretation of the statistics. There's a wonderful saying, at least I think it's a wonderful saying, that wealth is packaged experience. Your value proposition, just like in the direct mail and the email, is your ability to take real estate data and making meaningful and, and re of relevance to the recipient. So having a system that's integrated and automated that allows you to do a regular market update is huge. And again, reinforces why people hire a realtor, people work with whom they know, like, and trust, based on their knowledge and expertise. So having what to do that easily is very important. On the relational side, birthday and moving anniversaries, you know, people love it when you remember and acknowledge their birthday and moving anniversaries, but it's one thing remembering when they are. That's one thing. And once you get beyond a certain modicum of clients, it's problematic to remember them. But once you do remember them, it's important to have a system to acknowledge them in a meaningful way. And that's really, really important. Again, there's the informational and the relational. A lot of great agents really good at the informational, uh, I'm sorry, the relational, but you gotta be good at both. And that's where systems come in. Phone calls. There's another saying, and people don't call anyone anymore. And I gotta tell you, this is hugely important. There's a great saying, at least again, I think it's a great saying, in your marketing system, you wanna move people from the digital realm to the in-person realm. Think about where you make money. As a realtor, you make money by being in front of people, CMAs, listing presentations, negotiating deals and working with clients. And right in between the digital world and the in-person world are things like direct mail. That's why it's so important, associative marketing and phone calls. But you know, you've got to remember who to call and when. It's Most realtors will call people when you know they think about it, every sort of on an ad hoc on a basis, but wouldn't it be nice in having a system that daily reminds you who you haven't spoken to in a while, who and important dates and anniversaries? That's huge. And if you model the agents that do this well in their success systems, it's four phone calls, two social calls, two business related calls uh, on average a year, and and again. You want to move people from the digital to the in-person. In the spirit of doing that, move from the people from the digital to the in-person. Once you get beyond a certain modicum of contacts, you know, a lot of trainers will say, you know, you have to have in-person contact. Well, that's great when you're new and you have more time than clients. But what happens when you've been in business for many, many years and you have all these clients, all these contacts, nothing facilitates in-person contact better than a client event. 
Uh, it does not have to be expensive. It will vary depending on the demographic of your clients. I mean, if you're dealing with young children, it's going to be families. It's going to be different than if you deal with seniors. Uh, I'll give you an example. I, uh, from one of my clients, helped him design and put together a chocolate tasting making seminar, which he hosted at a penthouse condo, sold the condo during the event. They got a ton of referrals. I think that wasn't well attended. But here's the thing. Um, there's nothing expedites your time and people bring family and friends, everyone I know who does this well, not only does it pay for itself, but you know, they, they, you know, literally it expedites your time and you got to have a system to schedule these. There's a lot of logistic involves, but it's a great thing to do, especially if you've evolved in your business beyond a certain number of clients on the relational side, a wonderful thing you can do with your database. I highly recommend this. In the spirit of creating value for people is do an annual real estate checkup, otherwise known as a mini CMA. Now, when I mention this to realtors, they say mini CMA. Oh, my gosh, that's a lot of work. That's not what I'm talking about. A CMA is a lot of work. What I'm talking about is will take you two minutes to put together. And it's a mini CMA. So here's how you do it. I'll give you we could speak offline if need be. But here's how it's generally done. What you would do is. And you do this in your system, you do like one a day, you don't, or even less than that, depending on how many clients you have. It'll take you two minutes to do. What you do is for each one of your clients and hot prospects, what you do is you uh, provide a little report. In that report, you provide, say, some bellwether statistics. So you can choose any of them, but these are particularly easily obtainable. What percentage of list price or houses for sale on your client's street or area, for example? And... Uh, you might want to use how long are houses on the market for. And so what you do is you prepare this report. You don't email it to your clients. You call them. This is one of your four phone calls, perhaps. And what you would do is in, let me share with you a secret. In the, those conversations, very often by sharing these stats, that will be a prompt or a precursor to a CMA and then a full-blown listing presentation. The very least, you'll find out where your clients are in the buying and sell continuum. You'll also inoculate yourself from other geographic farmers that in your area that are presenting themselves as a community expert or marketing expert uh, for your area. You're the expert. And so you, it's like a bit of like an insurance policy on your database, a great thing to do. I've had people recommend to do this and they picked up listings, but what you've got to do is you've got to schedule them. They just don't happen. You can't do them all in one day. You schedule them th throughout the year, a wonderful thing to do. It takes you two minutes to do. And, and again, it's all part of your success system. Websites, I could do a whole webinar on websites, but suffice it to say, if you did a survey of all the realtors out there in North America and asked two questions, how many realtors have a website? Uh, I don't know what the actual statistic is, but it's somewhere in the 90 some odd percentile of realtors have a website either through their brokerage uh, that they're a member, brokerage they're part of, the real estate board and or association, or one they've procured on their own. Most realtors have a website, 95% of realtors in some capacity, if not higher. If you were to ask all the realtors have a website, which is statistically most realtors, how much business that they get from the website? The answer is actually very interesting. It's most likely less than 4%, and that's being gracious. And the reason why realtors have these websites, and some of them are just beautiful, and they don't get a lot of business, is because they don't connect their website with their success system. In a nutshell, there are four criteria to make a website successful. How do you get people to go there? When someone goes to your website, you need really good information that uh, motivates people to number three, leave their contact information. And if they do that, you know as well as I do, you have minutes, and that's <laughs> less time, to contact that lead, take them from an e-lead to a telephone communication to ultimately you're in meeting them in person, doing a CMA listing presentation, showing a property and what have you. So why websites are not successful is realtors have these websites, but they're not connected with their success system to convert them from an e-lead to a in-person contact. The same is true for social media. You know, realtors, I could do a whole webinar on this, but so realtors spend so much time, energy, and money on social media. You know, the number one, suffice it to say, the number one issue for realtors where social media is concerned is content. They don't have content for their website, their blog, their Facebook page, and or Twitter and places like that. 
and nor do they have time to research and write content. So imagine having a system that provides you really well-researched substantive content that when people Google your name, you get associated with. Because here's what happens. I'll give you a classic example in brief. I won't be too long in this. But if I'm having lunch with a friend and that friend says to me, Phil, do you know a good realtor? And I refer you. Does that friend, that friend will take your name and number, but do they call you right away? No, they do what most people do. They check you out online. You're doing this with other products and services. So when they check you, the person I referred you checks you out online. The key issue is, are you associated with well-researched, well-written information? For most realtors, they don't have time to research or write content. So if you have a system that allows you to do this, this is huge. And remember, this is all part of the process of taking an e-lead and converting them to ultimately an in-person contact and when you're in front of people, you're making money. And it's all about having integration and automation with everything in one place. Having worked with agents now for 34 years, been in business for 94 years, but working with agents for 34 years, applying the success system that I'm talking about on a hundred person database, on average, I get my clients, this is actually very conservative, in excess of 15 ends a year. And whenever I say this, Realtors say, come on, Phil, 100 people database, that's not a lot of people. Well, let me give you some context here. It's not the number of people in your database, it's the quality. As I said at the outset, it's better you have 100 qualified people than 1,000 people who barely know who you are, uh, you'll get more better results. So let me give you a couple strategies to qualify your database. This will be incredibly helpful because I think people spend too much money, time and energy chasing leads that are low quality, high competition, as opposed to really qualifying the high quality, low competition leads, the leads that you want. So here's two great ways of vetting or qualifying your database. One is the ultimate qualification question. And it goes like this. When you're looking at your database, uh, ask yourself the following question. Does this person have the ability and desire? The operative word is desire, because if someone doesn't have the desire, really, they're not really a key supporter. Do they have the ability and desire to either A, refer you business, and or B, repeat sale with you? Let me repeat that. I don't know if you want to write it down or I can share with you afterwards. But does the person have the ability and desire to either A, refer you business, and or be repeat sale with you? If the answer is yes, they are worth a fortune for you in terms of residuals, referral and repeat business. They're a high quality, low competition lead. The answer is no, you don't get rid of them. They're just not there yet. The second way of doing this is a little bit more intuitive. I call it the 10 second rule. And it goes like this. If you're looking at a name of your database and 10 seconds goes by and you're scratching your head and you're thinking, who is this person? If you don't remember them, then all likelihood, they probably don't remember you. You don't get rid of them. They're just not, they're more of a be less person. So what you end up is a core nucleus of people in a database. That could be for some of you, 20 people, could be 50 people. It's not the number, it's the quality. And you wanna grow that over time to critical mass of about 50 to 100 rock solid plus people who say to you, you're my agent, love you. I'm gonna send you referrals in the short term and repeat sale with you down the road. And then when you do that, you have a business like Rosa, you have that a commodity, you have that, that annuity-based relational business that gets better and better every year. So just in a review, and you apply the success system, which is an integrated and automated system all done for you, where you have monthly direct mail newsletter to your A-list clients and hot prospects, you have a monthly e-newsletter to your B-list contacts, a monthly market update to all your contacts and relationship building call approximately once a quarter, an annual real estate checkup, obviously annually, birthday and moving anniversaries once a year, and ideally one in-person contact on an annual basis, a client appreciation event. And if this sounds like a lot of work, it should, but in reality with integration and automation, the right success system, it's less than two hours a week. You know. In my world, I commute over two hours a day to and from the office, and sometimes it's longer than that, depending on traffic and the weather. But the bottom line is you're doing the same thing and going about your day and doing your business. 
uh, to spend less than two hours a week tweaking a system with a hundred person database for hundred people in a database getting over 15 transactions, that's a great ROI. That's a great return on your investment. Uh, that's really, uh, that's what you want. And these are the high quality, low competition uh, business. Uh, so that's a really good return. And if you're a new agent and you're wondering, does the success formula work for me? Well, let me share with you a little couple of quick things. You know, I recently, I deal with my job, I deal with the whole continuum of agents. Um, I spoke to an agent that's 80, get this, 81 years old, 51 years as a realtor. Could you imagine? This guy's still going strong. I put together a strategy for him playing a success formula. Uh, he only had 178 people in his database, by the way, out, after 51 years. Uh, I got the qualified. And then on the other end of the continuum, I spoke to an agent not so long ago that was licensed less than 20 minutes. He's actually referral by his managing broker. And I got to tell you, it was funny. He didn't know where his office was, didn't have business cards. And let me share with you the advice that the 81-year-old gave to me for new agents. He said, he's been in business five decades. That's a long time, longer than some of you have been a lot. And he said, you know, he's been the ultimate transactional realtor over five decades. And he said, he made money as a realtor over that time, but he, he calculates he lost way, way more money by being transactional and not having a system in his business than he ever made in business. He's literally lost more money by not being organized. So the message for new realtors is this. The earlier you get organized in a system and scale and grow, the more successful you'll be. Uh, and it all, you know, if you were building a house, you'd want to put the foundation first, the walls, and then the roof. Start small and scale. And so I help a lot of re new realtors do that. Your future self will, will thank you. So let's summarize. Basically, there are two types of real estate agents when it comes to systems. They're the, like Carl, the transactional-based commodity agents, predominantly dealing in low quality, high competition leads, perpetuating that feast of famine cycle, having a good month, a bad month, a good year, a bad year, uh, never really capitalizing on the amount of business they should. And then there are agents uh, that are like Rosa that are having, they're not, they, they avoid the transactional trap and they have consistent, high quality, low competition business. They have a, a relational annuity-based business that gets better and better and better every year. Let's face it, you want more high quality, low competition leads because they're more enjoyable to work with. You'll make more money. They're really the lifeblood of your business. 67% of business actually comes from this area. And as more realtors join the business, the future is brighter for networkers and marketers. Because if you have to all the time compete in a commodity-based marketplace, it's very expensive and you're not getting the residuals. And so you'll be spinning your wheels. And you know this, the best leads, the highest quality, lowest competition leads comes from referral and repeat business. You know that, and also from your relationships in terms of your sphere of influence. But in order to tap into that reservoir, you need a strategy. You need a automated marketing system. You can't do it yourself, like the one person show. You can't do it with four or five suppliers trying to cobble together uh, a strategy which is incredibly expensive and the pieces don't fit together. You need to integrate and automate so that you can leverage, do those three pillars, convert on the front end, transactional management in the middle, and get more of the residuals on the back end through integration and automation. And the bottom line is, for 34 years, I've been helping agents do that with what's called the client referral system. This is evolved over three decades, and it applies the success formula. Literally wrote the referral and repeat marketing book, and then a follow-up book uh, to that as well. And in the client referral system, it's all about having everything in one place. Direct mail marketing for your clients and your leads, all done for you. You're worth too much money to be stuffing envelopes. It includes automated and integrated, customizable, just like the direct mail, email marketing. Complete social media marketing content. Again, people Google your name. Uh, Connecting your existing website, or we provide you a website to do those four criteria, capture leads. Uh, first of all, provide you substantive content for your website that captures leads and be able to respond to leads immediately. You don't have two hours to respond to a lead and convert the lead. And all of this needs to be powered with a best-in-class, easy-use CRM that facilitates 
all of these tools with, with them in one place at a fraction of the cost. The client referral system uh, is used by the top realtors in North America and at a fraction of the cost were you to try and do it yourself. If you're interested in the client referral system and applying the principles that I've talked about today, what I'd like to do is just give you a complimentary two-month trial for you to see for yourself. Nothing is better than personal experience. And in the trial, what I'll, you'll be able to, there's no contracts, no obligation. You'll be able to have printing up to 60 uh, newsletters, up to 100, uh, 60 days, two months of uh, up to 100 printed newsletters, which you can divide amongst your leads and your past clients. Uh, there's some small cost related to postage, but it's next to nothing. Completely free email marketing. And again, you'll know if you like this within an hour. Free social media content, two months. Uh, free exact contact serum, which is our company. Uh, you'll be able to have that for free. Free lead generating website, or you'll be able to connect the system to see how it works with your pre-existing website. And you get an app for your iPhone or Android phone. And I'll even be providing you as part of the trial, a copy of one of my books as a gift. But the bottom line is um, you really have a choice to put systems in place that are integrated and automated, or by default, you end up transactional. Here's a chance to do all of this literally for less than the cost of a postage stamp. If you're interested in the trial, write the word Morris, M-O-R-R-I-S, in the chat box, and I will personally call you, or one of my colleagues will call you, We'll set up a 20 minute consultation because here's the bottom line. There are different strategies depending on where you are in your business. Uh, there are different strategies whether you're new. Uh, again, there's a wholly different strategy for newly realtors than there is for realtors that have been in business for any length of time. And again, I deal with the whole continuum. So um, I can help you with that. I will answer any questions. I will, you may be doing part of the success system already. You can tailor what we do. So write the word Morris, M-O-R-R-I-S. I will call you. I'll find out about you. This is not about me. And we'll come up with a strategy. Uh, if nothing else, uh, you, I'll give you ideas. I've got, if wealth is package experience, I've got decades worth of experience of what works and what doesn't work. I'm contemplating writing another book on what not to do in real estate marketing. Cause I think people spend way too much money doing the wrong things. I'm gonna call that real estate marketing horror stories because you don't have to spend a lot of money in marketing. Matter of fact, here's, a, here's something interesting. The longer you're in real estate, the less money you actually need to spend if you integrate and automate and do the right things. Uh, it's very, actually very simple. So if you're interested in the consultation, the 60 day trial, write the word Morris I will contact you. I'll find out about you, what you're doing. You can grill me with all the questions you need to. And I'll share with you information on how to get started on the trial. But, you know, you really in your business have a choice. You can either put systems in place. It's kind of like gravity. You don't have to believe in gravity, but it exists. In the absence of, <laughs> in, you know, in the absence, gravity exists where you believe it or not. If you were to go to a building step up, you discover that gravity exists. If you don't put systems in, you discover very, very quickly, you'll become transactional. And you know, it's more, so much more enjoyable when the phone rings and it's a client uh, or a referral, uh, referral from a client, you're having a completely different conversation than it's someone calling you and it's based on price. So if you want more of the good stuff, you want to leverage your time in the relationships, I can help you do that. And it's all about having integrated automated systems. Again, my name is Phil Hollander. If you're interested in speaking, it'd be an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Again, no obligation. Um, uh, write the word Morris. Or if you don't want to do that, here's my direct contact information. I can be reached at phollander at morrismarketinggroup.com. That's my direct email, phollander at morrismarketinggroup.com. And my direct number is 1-800-308-6134, extension 217. Uh, and I will uh, set up a time, we'll, we'll, we'll speak, I'll give you different ideas about how to take your business to the next level. You know, everyone's looking for the magic bullet in real estate. The magic bullet in real estate is doing the fundamentals well consistently day in and day out. As someone once said, Real estate is not a complicated business. It's actually a very simple business. Doesn't mean it's an easy business, 
But if you want to do this well, you need to model the realtors that have figured this out. And the realtors that have figured this out are all using integrated and automated systems. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you today. If you have any questions, I can address them now or write the word Morris. We can speak personally uh, and I can review all this with you. So thank you for attending today. Uh, look forward to speaking with you soon. Have a wonderful rest of the day and a successful and prosperous 2013. Uh, 2023, sorry, <laughs> 2023. Uh, thank you so much. We'll speak to you soon. Write the word Morris. We'll chat. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much.